Good morning, Home Church. We are so excited that you're here with us this Sunday, and we know that and we know that there are so many people tuning in from all across the world, whether that be Japan, Ukraine, um, we had some in Malawi. So whether it's good morning, good afternoon, good day, uh, we just want to make sure that you feel welcomed and a part of the Home Church Online family. Absolutely. My name is Hillary, and I'm here with our online pastor, Andrew. And we are so happy you're joining us today. We have a big month. This Sunday, yeah. we are we are in our- It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. We're in our Build the Fam series, and it Come has on. been so awesome. We hope that if you're watching for the first time and you're tuning in, that you feel right at home here at Home Church Online. We want you to feel a part of the family. Yeah. This whole series is on building the family, building the church, um, building your family at home. And so we hope that you are being so blessed by it. It's been so awesome so far. Yes, and if you guys are just tuning in for the first time, go to myhomechurch.ca and check out some of the past messages. Pastor Jaken has brought it in this Absolutely. series. And I've just loved every single aspect of it, of building the fam mm -hmm. and how it just takes those small actionable steps each and every day, but easy to implement into your life. Um, so we wanna make sure that you go check out past messages. But as we're talking about building, yes. we have an exciting thing coming up next week. Mm -hmm. We are having our church building offering. Um, so if you guys want to take part of that, yeah. we really want to encourage you to spend some time in prayer, yeah. prepare for That's this okay. get together with your spouse and make sure that you're coming into alignment, into agreement mm -hmm. of what you want to contribute, what you want to give back. I know for Emily, myself, and I probably can speak for you and Dion as well, Most likely. <laughs> but the church has been so influential for us. Yes. So and true. I know the first time that I walked into home church, just seeing those smiles and those people waiting for me, but the fact that there was a mm -hmm. seat already prepared for me, That's so cool. set the stage. And I was at a pivotal area in my life where I really needed to just give it all to God. But having that safe place where I can come, have people surround me, have a community there, so be prepared. Yeah. It wasn't, it couldn't have been possible without the people that came before me. Right. So that's why I want to encourage you guys, because I know that likely there's people out there that are needing to hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. They need to step forward into their faith. And so we want to encourage you to pray this week of what you're going to give to help build the church with our next building project coming up. Absolutely. And you know what? You don't have to just be here in Red Deer. Maybe this has blessed you and you want to give to that. We want to encourage you. It's going to be a fun Sunday too. It's always exciting. Yeah. We are excited to build and we are coming. The next week is our 49th ninth anniversary of home church it's huge it's huge pastor mel and heather founded the church uh 49 years ago yeah. and so we are going to be having an anniversary service that week which will be so fun and exciting i love to celebrate what god has done in the past yes and then we're also building for the future yeah. so it's an awesome month it's going to be awesome it's great and, and then, then next weekend yes come april 1st and 4th we have our easter sunday services yes. so you want to make sure that you're prepared for that and then i believe it is april 2nd is good friday so yes. make so sure good. that you're ready for that yeah it is going to be so good good it's fridays so are always good. good so you're going to want to be there uh but for anyone that's tuning in for a first time or maybe that you've been watching for a while but just haven't connected yeah we want to make sure that you go to myhomechurch.ca and click that let's get connected button mm -hmm. someone from our team wants to make sure that you feel loved a part that yes. you're actually building the fam together so go on to myhomechurch.ca click that button and we'd be happy to connect with you throughout this week for sure we love community here at home church and being a part of the fam i feel like we say it so much but yeah. we really want you to know we don't want to just be faces on a screen or we don't want Pastor Jake to just be a face on a Come screen on. or the worship leaders, but we want to be family with you. So please yeah. get connected. We would love to know where you're joining us from, love to know a bit more about you and just see how we can pray for you and bless you this week. Yeah. And so today is going to be an awesome Sunday. Yes. We have so good. much. And so would you get ready for the worship today? Get ready for the word, grab your journal, have your coffee ready. Yeah. And we are going to stand to our feet right now and get ready for worship. Asking 
we didn't have to the same today I will build yes I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be come on one more time let's sing yes I Jesus today.
together here I am here I am here I am you can have it all you can have it all here I am every part here I am every messy part you can have it it all you can have it all here I am Matthew 18, 19, and 20 says, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them 
of my Father which is in heaven. Tonight we're going to pray. We're going to be lifting up every need in this place today. If you're watching us online or you're here in the auditorium, I want you to know that God is here and is going to hear all our prayers. Hallelujah. So I want you to lift your hands even as we pray tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. For your word says where two or more are gathered in your name, there you're in the midst of them. We thank you for your presence. We lift up every need today, oh God. Be it material, financial, spiritual, mental, whatever it might be, oh God. We bring it down at your feet tonight and we ask, Lord, have your way. Let every need, we call every need met. Father, Lord, we thank you for we know you answer us when we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. And all the saints said, Amen. Hallelujah. Hi, my name is Vince. I've been going to this church for a long time. And in the beginning stages of my life, marriage, kids, I did not have my priorities in the right. It was me, myself, and I. That's what I prioritized. I didn't prioritize my wife, my family, or the church. And because of that, everything was not going good for me. I reached a point in my life where things were not good. They got to a point where I realized that, or first of all, I thought I was, it was gonna be over. I was gonna leave the church, I was gonna leave my wife. Scary, like, you think if that would happen, what, where would I be today? And I needed God to get a hold of me and I needed my priorities in the right place. I remember leaving for work, I had to go for a five week hitch. Uh, Jeffrey was a couple weeks old and came back and I remember just holding him and realizing that, you know, I could have lost everything. And then that's basically the time when I, I just said, you know what, I need to change. Me, myself, and I is done. <laughs> my wife, my family, and the church is going to be number one. And, you know, it's easy to say that, but it wasn't easy. Uh, it took time, it took effort, it took being on my knees. Asking God to change me because of all the selfishness. There was so much selfishness in me. I know I didn't have my priorities right. And if you're wondering, do I have my priorities right? Is it you, me, myself, and I? Those are the three questions you need to ask yourself. Or is it your family, your church, your wife? Are you making them a priority? I see a marked difference in my life because of that. I made the decision. They are my priority. And you got to make that decision. If you're not happy with where you're at, your priorities are obviously wrong. I know in my life that's how it was. Once I changed those things, I know God made a marked difference in my life. Uh, so can I encourage you today? Uh, change your priorities. You know, if you're in a bad place, you know things aren't going well. Make God your priority. Make church your priority. Make your wife your priority. Make your family your priority. And trust me, God will do amazing things for you. Hello, my name is Troy Walker. Uh, I'm excited to have the opportunity to speak about giving today. My wife and I have been a part of Home Church for about 35 years, but when we first arrived, we were broke and broken souls with no real hope for our future. But we found Jesus and, and God has truly done a miracle in our lives. And today I humbly have to say that we have been so blessed by being planted in the house of God. I have a question for you. Are you blessed when others are blessed? Are you irritated sometimes when people talk about money, especially in church? A lot of times, you know, this is how I used to be when I was poor and I didn't understand the concept of giving. Contribution is a principle that is so important and critical to your life's overall success. I thank God that giving in faith is a principle that we learned early. I know a lot of my success in my life is completely directly attached to the contribution concept and faith giving. In fact, I could tell you story after story and miracle after miracle of God's hand moving on our behalf after making a faith contribution. And we firmly stand under the protection of the tithe. The Bible says he will rebuke the devourer 
He will open the windows of heaven over our lives. I can confidently stand here today and say, this is true. Don't think that contribution is just for someone else's benefit at your cost. I would dare to say to you that the giver actually gets the real gift. My personal belief is that sometimes in your contribution, you're actually giving to God himself. The scripture says, as you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me. Why is giving so important? Number one, it shows that God is first. Having God first in your life, it shows that you actually have faith. By giving uh, your, your life's earnings and giving some of your money away is a part of your life. Where your money is, that's where your heart is. You're showing God your heart by giving. Giving to me, it breaks greed over my life. It helps keep me grounded. It helps keep me real. It keeps me humble. And it brings balance to my life. We have these cards at church that are called Pray, Prepare, and Partner. And I just wanted to say that, you know what? Let's ask God for what we should be giving. Don't feel pressure. Feel faith. Prepare your offering for the Lord. Get ready to give. I don't wait to come to church to wondering what I'm going to give. I already know what I want to give to the Lord, and I bring my offering. I prepare it before God. And partnering, you know, individually we can't do much, but together we can do great things. I just want to thank you so much for your generosity and your contribution. I really used to love actually putting my offering in the envelope and handing it in. And, uh, but today it's a little different, modern times. On the screen you'll see the different ways that we give. I just want to thank you again. Bless you as you give. Welcome everybody to Home Church. So glad that you're with us this evening. And I'm excited about this message tonight that I've prepared that God has put in my heart for you, and I know it's going to help you as we talk today about priorities. So just nudge the person beside you and say, get your priorities straight. It is going to be so good. And I'm excited because next weekend is our miracle offering. Would you just say to the person beside you, I'm believing God for a miracle. Miracle. Miracle in your life, miracle in our church, and... and uh, I'm so excited because uh, we are taking the huge faith step that we've been believing God for years to take. We're taking it this year. If I would have said, you know, in all the days that we were going to take the faith step to build what God's put in our hearts to build in 2021 after 2020, uh, you know, I'd go, wow, that, that sounds crazy. But I tell you what, we are right at the beginning of God doing an amazing work in our city, in our nation. And I'm asking you, I'm asking those of you who are here in person, I'm asking those of you that are watching online, would you take a faith step with us? And would you pray, prepare, and partner? It's not to have pressure on it, it's to have faith in it that we would see God do amazing things in and through our church, in and through our community, in and through our nation. I, I believe it's gonna be a miracle sign and wonder. So would you put your hands together and give God a praise? And thank you for being a part of that. And uh, I'm excited about what God is gonna do. We're gonna to turn today to Psalm chapter 28, one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 128. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. Fear and follow. That's not the scary type of fear, it's the reverent type of fear. It's the put God first type of fear. Fear and follow, and that's what we're really gonna talk about tonight. Fearing the Lord and following in his ways. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor. How joyful and prosperous you'll be your wife will be like a fruitful grapevine flourishing within your home. Your children will be like vigorous olive trees as they sit around your table. That is the Lord's blessing for those who fear him. May the Lord continually bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper as long as you live. May you live to enjoy your grandchildren. May Israel have peace. Now, Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Fear and follow. And at the end of this scripture, Joshua says, 
But as for me and my house, what does he say? We will serve the Lord. And then Matthew 6, 33, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Fear and follow. Someone said fear and follow. follow. Father, thank you for your presence in this place today and I thank you, Lord, that there are gonna be so many shifts made in lives, in families, in marriages, in your church today. Father, I pray, Father, that you would anoint me in a way that would bring such hope and life, peace, joy, and Father, would just literally light hearts on fire for you today. I thank you for it in Jesus' name, and the whole church said, amen. amen. Would you give Jesus a praise offering as you're seated in the house of God today? <laughs> amen. Well, we started with these decisions, and whether you're sitting here in the house or you're at home, we're going to put these decisions on the screen, and if you would say these decisions with me, decision, I will build my marriage. Decision two, I will build my family. Decision three, I will build my church fam. Decision four, I will let nothing divide me in my marriage, family, or church family. And then there's decision five that Andrew Denton spoke about. Decision five, I will be a kingdom builder. So good. So good. Decisions are so important. But it's hard to make decisions without priorities. It's hard to have priorities without principles. Principles determine your priorities. Priorities determine your decisions. And good decisions managed for a lifetime bring blessing. My goal to help you in this series is simply this, to help you make a once in a lifetime decision that you manage that decision for a lifetime. I want you to catch that. Make a once-in-a-lifetime decision. A decision that you manage for a lifetime. In other words, there's a day where you say yes to Jesus. It's the best decision of your life. It's a decision that you make, but it's a decision that you manage and remake over and over and over for a lifetime. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? So all of a sudden, the enemy comes against that decision, doesn't he? Starts to get you out of your decision. Tries to get out you know, off the way of life. But if you can make a decision, and that decision becomes a principle in your life, that every decision is based off of that decision that you gave your life to Christ, well, it's no different in your marriage. When you stand before a minister and you say, I love you, and you say, as long as I live in sickness and in health, to death, to his part, all that stuff, you're making a one-time decision, hopefully a once-in-a-lifetime decision, and then you're going to manage that decision for the rest of your life. I love this picture that it gives us in Psalm 128 of the table. If you can imagine with me, the table is set, the cutlery's on the table, the plates are on the table. The food is on the table. Provision is at the table. People are at the table. The fam's at the table. Can I just tell you, I love the table. It's my favorite thing of the week. We, at least three times a week, sit with our families. It's one of the best decisions you can make as a family is to decide how many days a week you're going to sit as a family, but to sit at that table, and I got my spot at that table, and if anybody sits in that spot, I kick him out of that spot. It's my spot at the table. I get to sit at the head of the table, and the reason why I think fathers like the head of the table is because they get to see everything from the head of the table. This is my reward. The provision that's on the table I, I get to see that my family's doing good, and I, I, just, I just like to sit there, and I don't know, there's a certain stance that a father takes when he's just happy to be at the table, 
And, and, and I love the laugh at the table. I like the bug at the table. I love bugging. Anybody else like bugging? I love bugging. I love joking. I like teasing. I, I like being at the table and seeing the health of my family at the table. It is God's blessing and reward. I like watching Jude eat 15 pierogies <laughs> at the table. He just keeps eating those pierogies, but this is the blessing of life. And here in this scripture, it says that, that their wife shall be like a fruitful grapevine. Sometimes we read scriptures and it's like, what does that mean? Fruitful grapevine, it, it, it's a picture of joy. It's actually a picture of sexual charm. If you look, it's the book of Song of Solomon. It's a picture of, of favor. It's a picture of fun. It's a picture of festivity. And there's joy at the table. A wife is like a grapevine. And of course, a grapevine has more grapes. So it's a picture of your family that's coming at the table. My children, of course, this says it's a picture of olive plants. Two most precious things in Israel is the wine and the oil. And so if this is a precious place at the table. Olive trees take a long time to mature. So it's a wonderful picture that I get to be at this table for a long time as these children grow like olive trees, not weeds, at the table. They're patiently cultivated and every word at the table matters. Every prayer at the table matters. Every building up of each other at the table matters. And there's an olive tree that's built. And wonderful thing about olive trees is that olive trees produce crop for centuries. It's a picture of my life going past me. And as I'm a father at the table and speaking blessing on my children and speaking confidence in my kids and as I'm blessing them and pouring into them, the olive trees that are growing up are going to produce for centuries, generation after generation after generation, the goodness of God and an eternal reward. Oh, somebody should be more excited on Thursday night. And these Olive trees and grapes represent an abundant life. The abundant life that Jesus talked about where he said, I come to give you life, and it was talking about eternal life, but I also come to give you life more abundantly, and that's what God wants for us. But this scripture starts, and it prefaces all this wonderful things about fam. All these wonderful things about an eternal reward and the goodness of God that's at the table is, is prefaced by how joyful are those who fear and follow. And God is really putting it in our corner. And he's saying, if you will fear and follow, if you will reverence, if you'll put me first, and if you'll follow in my ways, there's a way of life. There's a way of doing family. There's a way of building your house. And if you'll fear me and put me first and follow in my ways, I'm gonna do something amazing in your house. Now, I don't know who's here tonight and I don't know all that's going on and I don't know the miracles that are needed, but I'm just confessing by faith tonight, no matter where you are, whether you're here or you're watching online, that if you'll make some choices today to fear, to put God first, and to follow him, God's gonna do some things in your family that are miracles in this coming season of time. He's gonna do some wonderful things in your life and those that are already on that journey, just stay on that journey of fearing and following. Well, of course, Joshua 24, fear the Lord, serve him wholeheartedly, fear and follow. Matthew 6, seek first, put God first and live righteously. There's a way of life for you to live. That's it. This is everything everybody's looking for. This is joy, this is happiness, this is peace. 
This is the reward from God. This is the, the, the thing that everybody in the world is looking for. And it's found in simply fear and follow, seeking God first and following in his ways. I want to lead you into two decisions tonight. And these two decisions tonight are the principles in which a whole bunch of other decisions come after. Decision number one is really simple. It's this, I will live a God first life. I will live a God first life. It's the fear side. Not the fear is scared, but the reverence side. I will reverence you, God. I will put you first in my life. And this is a big decision. It's the toughest one to make because you got to put yourself underneath God. You got to put him first. And this decision influences every other decision in your life and determines your future and the blessing of God on your life. Psalm 128, Joshua 24, fear the Lord. Matthew 6, seek him first. Exodus chapter 34, 14, you must worship no other gods. Right through all the Old Testament, you'll hear this. God says this over and over again. No other gods, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. God loves you, and he's jealous for your love. And if you watch Israel, and in context to the blessing that was on their lives, and the blessing that was on the nation, as they put God first, the blessing of God came upon them. As they began to worship other gods, the blessing of God fell off of their lives. So putting God first is the first decision. And that decision was really broken in the garden, Genesis chapter 2, because God is the God of order, and so God orders everything. He orders the birds and the animals, and he orders the trees and the fruits and everything that's in the garden, and it's all there, but God says, well, I got, I got one order. I got one thing you can't touch, and that's the tree. There's one tree you can't touch. There's one thing you can't have. The tree of the knowledge of the good, uh, uh, of good and evil. And Adam and Eve, they wanted what God didn't give them to have. And Adam and Eve lost the blessing. They put themselves ahead of God and lost the garden. Soon you find Cain and Abel are having this similar problem where Cain is giving his offering, he's giving his first, or Abel's giving his first, and Cain is upset about this, and so Cain kills Abel, and there's destruction in the family. Destruction in the family because, because there was disorder and division. You find in Genesis chapter 14, Abraham meets Melchizedek, which is a type of Christ, and Abraham gives his tithe, his first. And when Abraham gives his first, Abraham is blessed by God. And here's the sentence that I want you to, to get out of this today. It's this, when order is restored, blessing is released. When order is restored, blessing is released. So if something in your life is out of order or out of priority, Unfortunately, you're going to live broken. You're going to live without the blessing. Could life be this simple that we simply put God first in our lives and live in his ways and we live with a blessing in our lives, in our marriages, in our families, in our friendship, in our church? And decision one is the principle, I'm going to put you first, God, in my life. And this principle leads to a whole bunch of little decisions. And I'm just going to give you a few because I could just flip through the Bible and just go decision after decision after decision. Small decisions that begin with, I put God first. First one is, I will worship. 
I will worship. Of course, Hebrews 10, 24, let us not neglect meeting together as some do. And so it, it comes to this point like, like I, I, I missed more days in my life of not being in church in the 11 weeks of COVID last year than I did my whole life previously. It's a decision. I'm part of the house of God. I'm part of the gathering of God. I will worship and I will worship with God's people. And I know there's some that can't, but there's some that need to be regathered into the house. I will worship, it's my decision. Another decision is I will tithe. Matthew 3.10, or Malachi 3.10. I will tithe, I will give God what is his. It's a decision. Back and I don't even think about that decision. We haven't thought about it for years. Should we tithe or shouldn't we tithe? It's not even a thought in our minds because in putting God first made that decision for me. Putting God first made the decision that I'm somebody who doesn't miss a day in the house of God. Putting God first makes the decision in my finances. All these different areas of life just fall into line with that one decision. I will be devoted. Joshua 1.8, study this book, meditate it on a day and night, obey it. You will prosper, you will succeed in all you do. See, the decision of putting God first not only makes him first in my week, but it makes him first in my day. I will devote. I will have time with Jesus today because I've decided right at the very beginning, it's a once in a lifetime decision that I manage on Monday. We will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, verse 14, as for me and my house and as a father, I've decided, and it's not because I'm a pastor, as many of you know, I didn't want to be a pastor. It's a decision long before then. It was a once in a lifetime decision that I've managed and I continue to imagine. As for me and for my house, my tribe, we will serve the Lord. It's already decided. Some people, they, they don't understand what they're trading. They're trading hockey for church. They're trading staying up late on Saturday night for the house of God. What is the cheapness of your exchange? Of course, I'm not speaking to you because you're here this morning and you're online. But some make some really bad trades for a God-first life and the blessing of God that comes with that God first life. It's really true. Might sound tough, but it's the truth. Some people put family over God and then lose their family. Family time, family time, family time. Can I tell you, there's no better family time than being in the house of God together. We'll take your family out of the church for anything. It's for me and my house. God is first. That decision has already been made. Priority is the, the fact or condition of being treated as more important. And so what you're saying is, God, you're the most important thing in my life. And the moment that you say that is the moment that God's jealousy towards you just goes, yeah. Order is to arrange. And so maybe you're here tonight or you're watching online and there's just some shifts that need to happen in your life to make a one-time decision to put God first, but it also ticks off all these other decisions in your life and all these other decisions in your life start releasing the blessing of God in your life because it's not just the fear of the Lord and him first, but all of a sudden you find yourself following in the ways that you should live. Which takes us to decision two. I will live in the way God designed me to live in his word. I will follow. Seek his righteousness. That word righteousness means, not righteousness means right character and right path. In other words, God, what you want to do in me. 
Seek his right way. God, clean me out. Do the work you need to do on the inside of me, not just on the outside that I be a religious person who just checks off the boxes, but do the character work in me, God, and help me live out the character in the choices and decisions that I make. Now, how, how many of you know life is complicated? Wave at me if life is complicated for you. Life is complicated. Got bills to pay, mouths to feed, people to lead, kids to raise, house to clean, lawn to mow, dog to walk, friends to connect with, car to wash and fix. And life gets messy and complicated. And sometimes it's not as easy as a checklist of things that come down a list. How many of you have ever made mistakes with your priorities out of order? You've all of a sudden gone, oh, my priorities are out of order. But then you shift them back to what they need to do. I remember one time, uh, I was so excited. I was doing music as a living, and I was, just, I was just trying to make a living. Honestly, I was just trying to make a living. I was trying to make it work. I was trying to feed the family, and, and Ava was just born. Levi was about two years old. And, and, and making, making a living in music is very, very difficult. And so I buy this really horrible truck, and I got four guys ready to spend three months on the road with me in this truck going from place to place to place doing concerts, and I got it all booked up, and I'm excited because I got it figured out. I can barely make a living doing it this way. It's funny. It's funny to me. So I can barely make a living doing all this crazy stuff. And I phoned a friend, and I said, this is awesome. I can barely make a living doing this. I got four guys and I got a truck and we're gonna travel all across Canada and in through the United States doing music and I'm excited about it because I can barely make a living doing it. My friend says to me, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean what am I doing? So your wife isn't gonna have a husband for three months? Levi's not gonna have a dad for three months? How much longer is this going to go on? What's going to happen? How's this going to work? All of a sudden, as I'm sitting there, I'm going, I'm doing all this, and I'm barely going to make a living. (laughs) And I'm going to come back, and I'm barely going to have a family. And I was on the edge of making a bad decision. How many thankful for people that help you in life not make bad decisions? Help me make a better decision and help me move some things around and make a better decision along the way. But sometimes, sometimes life gets messy with this and it's hard. Like, you know, you get, you get married and your attention is on one another. Just want your full attention. Look me in the eyes. Lots of time together. And then you have a baby. If you're a father, you know what it's like. You walk into the room and you realize, I'm no longer number one. <laughs> not for this little season. Because there's someone that's not going to live if you don't give this little scrawny guy some food. And have attention. And when he cries, you got to run. And when he poops, you got to clean. And you got to... You gotta move, and so there's a time where, where what would normally be one, two, three, four, five, it gets shifted. But if you don't shift it back as soon as you possibly can, you'll all of a sudden find yourself living together and just deciding that you'll stay together till the kids leave. You gotta shift back that priority. There's gotta be some Something going on in your, in your senses that is going, okay, this is the way it is for, for, for right now, but, 
but, but this is gonna shift back and we're gonna reprioritize and I'm gonna put more time back into my marriage and I, we're gonna date even when we have this kid. I, I don't know how we're gonna do it. We're gonna make it as good as we possibly can because I gotta keep my priority my wife because she's who I got for all eternity. Hello? Reprioritize, reorder, and so all of a sudden kids over marriage equals trouble. No matter how awesome your girlfriends are and your friendships, and I can talk to her about anything. If that gets over, your husband equals trouble. You gotta reprioritize, get back into that talking mode with your husband. Ministry over family equals trouble. It's a bad priority. And in fact, uh, Paul talks about in 1 Timothy 3.3, 3, he says, if someone can't manage their own household, they can't manage God's house, the church. And let me tell you, there's lots of pastors that get that messed up. Someone told me one time, they said, Pastor Jacob, this is a, a, a pastor that speaks into our life. He said this, one of the best things he said, to me, he said, you have a good marriage, church will be good. Good family, church will be good. And all of a sudden, if you decide, well, I'm gonna put God first, fear the Lord, put him first, but I'm also gonna seek his ways, I'm gonna follow his ways, all of a sudden the follow is the principle that puts God's word in every single page as you read it, and all of a sudden you start making decisions, and I'm just gonna give you a few, I'm not gonna give you all, because I can't go through the whole Bible in 20 minutes. But all of a sudden you're deciding these, singles, married people, you're making this decision. I'm gonna live pure. No porn, pure. You're making that decision and you're reading God's word and you're reading the Proverbs every day and you're reading uh, Psalm chapter 119 verse nine. How can a young man stay pure by obeying the word of God? And that becomes a decision after following in God's ways. I will live pure. It's a good decision. Then all of a sudden you find you're deciding, I will live in unity. Psalm 133, it's the Lord's commanded blessing and one plus one equals one and it builds the bond in my life. And so I'm making this decision, it's a decision to live in the ways of God and unity is a way of God in my marriage, in my church fam, with my friends. I'm gonna live in, mar- in unity together and nothing is gonna divide me. In the world that's so divided. Unity is my decision. I'm making the decision, I will love. I will love. Ephesians chapter five, love your wife as Christ loved the church and laid his life down for the church. I will love, and so even when some things are unlovely in certain times in married life, which is what happens if you're human. You make the decision in the middle of your humanity and in the middle of everything not being perfect, you make the decision, I will love. I made the one-time decision and because of that one-time decision, I'm gonna manage it in my life and I'm waking up on Tuesday morning and I'm saying, I will love. Come on, can we give Jesus a praise offering in this place? Oh, you're making the decision, I will raise my family to serve God. You're making the decision, I will work hard. I'll get up in the morning and I'll work hard. It's one of the ways of God. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. It's a strong work ethic that you can read throughout the scripture. Lazy hands are the devil's workshop, but if you work hard, God will bless your life. You wake up, it's a principle. So yes, God is first, but I will work hard because I'm following in God's ways and the ways of his word. Here's another one, I will reconcile. It's a decision. It's predetermined. It's a decision I've already made. 
And then when it comes up and it needs to be solved and needs to happen, I've already made the decision. I will reconcile. Problem comes between us. Guess what? I've already made that decision. I will reconcile. You have two people that have decided that they will reconcile. And guess what? I can tell you what. You're going to have a good marriage and a good life. I will forgive. You know, if you make a lifetime decision and manage, for, manage it for a lifetime, there's a word for it. Can I give it to you? It's faithfulness. That's what faithful is. Faithful is making a one-time decision and managing that decision for the rest of your life. See, God's ready to bestow blessing on some tables. Some tables are already in the blessing. You've already been living the ways of God. You got God first and and, and the olive trees are growing and the grapes are growing and, and you're living in the blessing and there's blessing at your table. There's other tables that need to make some order changes so that a month from now, six weeks from now, maybe even a week from now with some decisions, honestly, but a year from now you would sit back at your table and go, what is at my table? I'm now living in the blessing of God. If someone is ready to reorder their priorities, get ready for the blessing because when order is restored, blessing is released. I want to tell you a story just before I conclude. It's a story that I heard Bishop T.D. Jakes tell, and I can't tell it nearly as good as he can tell. But he went on an African safari, and he was telling this story about how he went on this African safari, and, and he had a zoologist beside him. And the zoologist knows everything about the zoo, knows everything about every animal. And, and so his son wanted to see an elephant so bad, a baby elephant. He's, I want to see a baby elephant. So he wanted to get his son to see a baby elephant. And so they get to some foot tracks. And this zoologist could tell everything about the elephant by, the, by this Foot track, just by the foot track. He said, that's a female elephant, he could tell by the foot. It's about five years old. It weighs such and such pounds. He could tell everything about this animal. But he couldn't tell you where to find it. The person that was driving the truck ahead stood up, licked his finger, and said, the elephant is over there. See, the problem is, is when we know the problem, we know there's an elephant, but we don't go and find the elephant because we're not aware enough to go, I'm not just going to see all the things that are needed to be done, but I'm going to follow till I find what is needed to be found. Don't be somebody who just looks at the issue and looks at the problem and knows what everything is but doesn't do anything about it. That's called a fool in the Bible. Don't be someone who can solve everybody else's problem but can't solve your own by the word of God. Let's people be people that can see the issue and see the problem, but let's also be the people that can follow the Spirit of God and the Word of God to a place where we can actually see what God has prepared for us. Yeah. Psalm 128, how joyful are those who fear the Lord. Can I just tell you, as you make decisions today to follow in His ways, the joy's coming back in your marriage. The joy's coming back in your family. The joy's coming back in your life as you choose to serve the Lord. How joyful are those who follow in his ways. And verse five says, may the Lord, and I want you to see this because as you make a decision, God starts blessing. May the Lord continually bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper as long as you live. May you live to enjoy your grandchildren. May Israel have peace. Now, I want you to see this today. This is what I want to get to, right? All of this is to get to here. Because what God desires for you, I want you to hear this, is a lifetime of blessing. As you make a one-time to decision, to manage the decision for a lifetime, God says, as you make that decision, 
I'm going to put my blessing on your life. And so it goes like this. As you declare, I will build my marriage, God says, I will bless your marriage. As you declare, I will build my family, God says, I will bless your family. As you declare, I will build my church, I will be united with my church, I will see my fat church family go forward, God says, I'm gonna bless your church. Because as you decide, fear, follow. Put him first, follow. You're gonna find yourself at the table. You're gonna find yourself at the table. Looking around the room. Smiling, laughing, cheering. I just declare, I prophesy over families in the house and families watching this online. I prophesy over this next month, over this next season of time, there's going to be some differences at the table because there is going to be a move at the table as you decide God blesses. And I just declare that over you today. I declare that over you, and I declare that over your family in Jesus' name, which takes us to the most important decision, which is your decision to make that one-time decision that you manage for a lifetime where you say, I'm going to put God first, and I'm going to follow Jesus. See, what happened on the tree started with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve ate from the tree and their world was broken. Jesus went on to the tree so your world could be whole. And it's your day, it's your opportunity to say yes to Jesus. So I'm gonna ask everyone in the house to stand and if you need to give your life to Christ today, you need to turn your life to him. You need to say, oh God, I, I, I don't wanna live for selfishness, I wanna live for you. Would you pray this prayer with me and just say, Lord Jesus, today I choose to reverence you, to fear you, to put you first, and I choose with my life to follow in your ways from this day on. Let it be a once in a lifetime decision and a decision that I manage for a lifetime. Father, that truly, when I get to heaven someday, you would say, well done, good and faithful servant, because I followed you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give Jesus a praise offering in this place? If you've made some decisions, would you just put your hand up and say, yeah, I made some decisions today. Some little decisions, but some big principle decisions. Some things have been solidified in me. Some things have been strengthened in me today. How many of you are here today and you say, I need to make a little adjustment somewhere. I need to make a move. I need to adjust some things. Make that decision. Oh, come on, let's put our hands up in the presence of God today. Oh, come on. And I will build my life upon you.
Come on, just begin to praise Him in this place. Come on, give Him a praise if He's so worthy of it. Oh, come on, lift up your voice. blessing of God on you. As you put him first and you fear him, his presence is coming so close to you as you fear him and put him first. I declare the blessing of the presence of God upon you and upon your house, upon your family. And as you follow, I declare the promises of following God to be your portion. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance towards you. Give you his peace. In Jesus' name. And the whole church said, amen. Come on, give him praise offering in this place. What an incredible Sunday, an yeah. incredible service. We hope that you loved it. And if you said yes to Jesus today, we are so excited for you. That is the best decision you could have made. And we want to make sure that you know what is next. Once you say yes to Jesus, there's so many fun steps that come after that. And it's right. it's exciting. It's not scary. And we want to help you with the next step. So if you said yes to Jesus today, you can go to myhomechurch.ca. There's a button. It says, I said yes. yes. And you can click that. And we would love to have someone from our team connect with you this week. And just just help you with your next steps in discipleship and it is going to be awesome we are so excited for you yeah and like pastor jacob was talking about this morning of building the fam and being mm -hmm. a part of that community and making those small steps forward yes. we want to be there a long way to encourage yeah. you so whether this was your first time watching or maybe you've been connecting with us on an ongoing basis yeah. but you haven't actually reached out yet just make that small step today mm -hmm. and go to myhomechurch.ca connect with us we want to make sure that you feel a part of the family yes. that you're growing um, and of course we have small groups throughout the week so yes. make sure to find a small group that fits you um, we're meeting on zoom so it's lots of fun there and the small group series have been incredible yeah it's been so good so we want to make sure that we connect with you throughout the week we love you we care for you guys make Absolutely. sure that you're ready for the building project next sunday and go out and have a blessed week the best week ever.